What's going on guys? I wanted to do another uh, overview of the projects that I've been in over um, you know the, the past well the, the past several months so by the ones that I've been in recently. When I did this video um, about three weeks ago I went over everything it basically took me about an hour to go over all of the different projects that I've been in so I don't think I'm gonna spend uh, as much time going through all of the different projects that I'm in but I wanted to give a little bit of my take on uh, some of the projects that I've been recently and um, just kind of give you a little bit of an update because I don't get a chance to do that all the time. So um, I've been in uh, you know a bunch of different uh, uh, projects recently and, and it's, they seem to be doing a, a lot better. So for instance, um, Mirror Trading has been one that is has been really good for bitcoin if you just going down down the list i've left this in the description so with with bitcoin um i'm really in in a few like i'm in mirror trading which looks really good um cash fx i've left reviews to those videos below as well um there is also a mining one that's mining up that that looks interesting i mean mining cloud mining is kind of uh you know it's it doesn't have the best um uh, People don't look at cloud mining with the, the greatest um, positivity because there's been so many illegitimate projects. But this one's paying pretty well. I mean, I'm making like three, four dollars a day in, in that one. So it's, it's uh, you know, about every, and it has low withdrawal fees. So like, I think once you get to about like uh, 11, $12 in, in Bitcoin, you're able to withdraw like 0 0.001. So there's a, you know, it's a pretty big community. And um, that one is, is uh, is interesting uh, to see see how, how long that one's going to last, but it's it's doing well right now. Uh, I would say like Mirror Trading and Cash FX seem to have a little bit more longevity, and those ones seem a little bit better, uh, in my opinion, in terms of investing. Um, but the uh, but those are my the the projects that I'm in for Bitcoin right now that. Um, uh, look the best right now. So I've left a bunch of projects that I'm interested in and I'm, I'm continuing to look at uh, mining projects, uh, other passive income projects, uh, different uh, platforms that have come online, smart contracts. And uh, I've really just got a big, big long list and people reach out to me all the time and present new projects. So I'm more than willing to uh, do some of the research and give some of my thoughts on those. Uh, as far as the Ethereum, um, the only ones I'm really in right now are Hex and uh, Forsage. So Hex has been, you know, it's, uh, Hex is like, you, you see everything going on with their, their community. It's, it's like, you know, it's performing really well right now. It's, it's, it's hard for me to look at that right now with, with uh, the most optimism, just because it's, you know, a lot of the numbers seem to be manipulated. Like that's been somewhat proven with the recycling that's going on with in the contract. Um, there's other projects that are kind of taking some of the principles of what Hex is doing and putting it into, uh, you know, similar projects without some of the same um, uh, issues that, that people find with, with Hex. So, um, you know, I, I think that um, overall, long term, it seems like it has a lot of longevity. There's, there's uh, some big whales, supposedly, according to Richard Hart, that have come in and staked for like 15 years. So a long, long time. They, they came in and bought massive amounts of hex and staked for a really long time. So that's good for, for the longevity of that project. I mean, I... I uh, I, I bought in, you know, I think like four or five days after after the launch, and um, you know, I picked some up on the exchange. I think I only had like a little over two ETH worth or so. I, I was it, it's frustrating for me because I was really wanting to get into that project between January and April because I figured that was um, in terms of uh, you know mimicking um, EOS's uh, ICO statistics, which is something that Richard Hart brought up. It seemed to me like that was the the ideal time to get into Hex, and uh, unfortunately, like I was moving, um, you know, I, some of the projects I was in weren't doing as well. I didn't really have a passive income uh, stream where I was able to to put in some money. Um, I even wrote it up on my whiteboard that I was that I was wanting to get in, and, uh, and then it, and then it pumps by, you know, 50x, and so you don't really want to buy, um, you know, when it when it when it does that. 
Um, and it's since gone to like, a, what, like 116X. Richard Hart always updates his Twitter feed. And it seems like it's just creeping up, slowly creeping up. There's no way to short hex really right now. So um, I, I think that the price is going to pump until December, until basically the big payout. And then a lot of people are anticipating that it's going to dump, uh, dump back down from people getting a lot of extra hex and, and selling that on the market. So that's kind of where I see hex right now. Um, I think if you're interested in getting in, it's probably best to just do some sort of um, dollar cost averaging um, you know, method. Uh, I don't really have any uh, spare funds right now to be able to do that. I'd like to, I'd like to throw in like, say like 10 bucks a day or something into hex and just um, dollar cost average, but um, not able to do that you know, right now. But um, I'm gonna keep an eye on it. I wanna see if it, if it dips back down because the, the, the pump that has, that has happened just doesn't seem that sustainable. So we'll see. Uh, Forsage is an interesting one. Um, experienced 24-7 crypto is a guy, a YouTuber that's been, that's been documenting a lot of that. He's been doing some interesting stuff with that. I mean, it's, uh, there's, there's some people that are, that have been doing pretty well, but it's not necessarily like a passive income option. You really need to work on that. You need to kind of recruit, you need to bring people in with, with Forsage. So if you're not really into uh, building networks or teams that might not be the best project for you. Um, it is long term, though. I mean, it's you know it's a smart contract and it'll be around as long as Ethereum's around. So that one to me is um, you know it's a minimal investment of like twelve dollars, and then you know you can you can get some people in, um, and uh, if that grows, you know you can do really well. There's people have put in like you know. Twelve dollars or something, and turned it into a thousand. So there's there's a lot of success stories like that. Um, so there's there's potential there. Um, I I I'll, I'd be interested to see how that grows. Like both Hex and Forsage, kind of in that you know, the decentralized finance space, have some some potential. Although I don't know how decentralized I would necessarily call Hex, just because of you know however much the the biggest whales in, in that contract hold you know including richard hart so um the forsage is much more decentralized in that in that sense and um, those two look look promising um tron is a uh, tron has uh several projects that are paying a little bit and there's a lot of projects that i want to get into uh, more uh, right now, I'm really just in bankroll and Fightron. Both of those have been paying me, um, you know, a few dollars a day, like two, three, four bucks a day. So you know, it's it, when you add all of these projects together, and you're making two, two dollars here, four dollars here, every day, and you add all of those up, it's, it's, um, you know, you can, you can, you can start to compound that into a situation where you're making like a hundred dollars a day. And then it's, um, you know, you can, you can live on that out here in, in the Philippines. So, um, you know, that, that looks really good. The match net is a, the biggest one with the most anticipation coming to Tron. And that's probably going to be launching towards the later part of this month. Um, I got into, uh, iMatch. And so if you're interested in getting into MatchNet and you don't necessarily want to mind, um, that was my last video that I did, uh, where I went into, um, the iMatch project, which is, which is really interesting and it, it's, it's paying really well. So right now, uh, as far as like my passive income, um, projects that are paying the best, uh, PowerMine and iMatch by far are paying the best. I mean, I'm making you know, $50, $60 a day or so in IOST uh, between those two projects. So those those have been um, the ones that I, I'm most interested in um, in um, uh, getting more involved with just because there's a lot of potential with those. Those have, uh, uh, you know, I, I talk with Ghost on a pretty pretty regular basis and um, as safe as well. And they, they've got some big plans for for power mine and they were coming out with a perpetual dice which is going to act like a an exchange in a way with with a number of different pairs they're coming out with a uniswap style decks um there's uh there's big plans that they they have in the works there this is really just kind of the beginning phases and the power mine the p mine token is really the foundation of that it's the bankroll that supplies a lot of the other projects so if you look at imatch imatch is 
is going to be um, most likely a very profitable project and you're able to um, buy into iMatch to have the ability for others to mine that for you with more, more efficient uh, methods to be able to do that. And uh, on top of that, you're earning dividends the, the sooner you get into some of those projects because they also act like an hourglass in a sense. So not only are they dividend paying projects, but you um, uh, have the ability to earn from people buying in after you. So those projects by getting in early can do really well, but they also, you know, even if you're not getting in early, the, the price appreciation on those isn't isn't that much you know it's it goes from 10,000 tron which is a lot it's like 150 bucks or so to um i think at the the last um phase of the token sale is going to be like i think 10,450 so it's not going up by a whole lot so that's one more where it, it pays to to be in a little bit early on those but um uh those those have been those have been the ones that have been doing the best for for, for me lately is, is really IOST and Tron. Um, I mean, Hex, Hex is going to be good, but it's, you know, like I've, I mean, I put two ETH in it's, uh, I mean, if it's hundred X, I guess it's worth, uh, what, 200 ETH or so. But, um, you know, I stake those for like five years. So I, I mean, I, uh, uh, I'm not going to be able to realize profits on those for quite some time. I had a strategy with those where I was doing like every 10 days or so where uh you know you're you're earning on the staked um uh, amounts and then uh every 10 days you can just restake like after and then basically pull the dividends and that was going to be my strategy and uh i was kind of talking about that strategy with uh with a uh with ghost and the power mind group and they want to implement something that would be kind of an offshoot of that where you might have the ability to do something like that by by staking um in, in inside that ecosystem so there you know there's some really cool things that um are, are in the works with that so i think that's going to be a um a very promising project once that once all of these different pieces really come into play um is, and um you know i'm also getting a lot more into some of the trading bots uh projects I'm, i mean i'm looking at like five or six of them right now i i have the only one that i'm really doing actively right now is keith's um uh, cat bot on Bitebit. So I've left a video where I kind of go over that in the description below. Um, that one is, you know, it works pretty well. They're, they're, they're dialing in things all of the, all of the time. Um, you know, when I first started with that, I was using like my entire balance and just kind of letting it go. And, um, they've done a lot of updates since then. So, um, you know, my account is, is down. I only had like, you know, I think I had like 200 bucks in there. And so my account's down, but it's been performing a lot better lately. And I'm only using like a small portion until they really get that uh, dialed in. That one is perhaps a little bit more active because you do have to be in the Discord group and kind of, um, you know, stay on top of some of the latest developments. They've, they've been changing a lot lately, but that one looks very promising. And there's a lot of other um, botting style projects that uh, that I'm researching and wanting to get more into that are kind of on hold. Like Titus AI was one I did a video on like six months ago. That's kind of like a Binance bot. Um, Crystal bot is coming out with one. That one looks, that one looks interesting. Um, from what I had heard in the beginning phases, it wasn't profitable. And I think they're, they're getting it to the point where now it's more profitable. Um, so there's, um, um, also uh, Swing Trade Pros, I talked with those guys. They have a bot that's kind of based on three commas that they are kind of slowly, uh, organically kind of building a, um, a platform around. Uh, and there's a few others, maybe like two or three others that I'm kind of looking into. So I really, I'm really wanting to get some of those uh, more dialed in and, and I'm gonna be throwing in, you know, more funds towards those as, as I get going. Let me check on the chat a little bit. Switch token, yeah, I've, I've heard um, a few guys talking about that. I mean, I guess with some of those, like, I haven't got as much into buying altcoins and on speculating on price. I mean, I may do that when I have funds to be able to do that. But, uh, like, I've been looking a little bit more into um, kind of um, projects or platforms where you have the ability to earn more of the crypto that 
like if you're putting in Bitcoin, you have the ability to earn more Bitcoin. If you put in Ethereum, you have the ability to earn more Ethereum, not necessarily speculating on the token price itself. So, um, but, um, but all of these projects, these ones that I have in the description below, these are the ones that I'm in right now. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I get contacted on Telegram, um, you know, every, every now and then for, for new projects, uh, people that are, you know, doing some research that have looked into some things, they want me to check it out. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm open to, to taking a look at some of these. Um, not all of them have, have really panned out. Like just yesterday I had one where like, it was like a cloud mining project and they, uh, they wanted, wanted me to help them with marketing and, and whatnot, but it's, they're not profitable contracts. And I was trying to like, it doesn't make any sense to, to put like $100 into a contract that you're only gonna make $30 from. Like the logic with these guys just didn't, like unless I'm not understanding it correctly, but it just, it didn't, I don't think they um, were very organized with what they were doing. So uh, I have to kind of weed through some of, some of those projects. Um, I do wanna get more into like mining on my own. So not necessarily like, um, I wanna get into maybe a couple, maybe two or three, um, at least profitable cloud mining projects. Um, but I also want to look into mining on your own or cas casually mining. And one of the ones that I want to get into is Monero because Monero, I think, has... Uh, Monero is like the, uh, the Bitcoin, what, what people thought they were buying when they bought Bitcoin in the beginning. There's someone that's been honking their horn over here nonstop for like 10 minutes. It's strange. Um, but yeah, uh, Monero is... is uh, um, one that I'm not really a big holder of right now. And I want to get more into that. Uh, there's, there's not necessarily like projects where you can buy Monero and like earn more Monero based on your Monero holdings. Um, there's like small ones sometimes where you can get in and you can earn like five, five to 10% annually. But, um, that's why I like, I, I'm interested in that. I've heard some good things about Grin. Grin is another um, kind of grassroots privacy coin that you can you can mine. Like, I don't necessarily want to get into like having mining rigs and things like that because you can't really travel with them. But if there's something like I could casually like mine on my laptop or um, or even like my mobile phone or something like that, um, I'm, I might be interested in that. And there's a there's a few that are out there that are like that, from what I understand. I don't know how profitable they are. It might not be very much um, at all, but if you, you know, if you get something where you're making like, say, like 10 cents a day or something by just letting your phone, you know, run a program or something, um, you know, I don't know. That might be that might be something to look into, but because uh, um, I know you can do something similar to that with Bat um, with uh, Brave Browser, though I haven't really dove into that too too much lately i know that like you you get paid to um to surf surf the web with bat um but i need to look into that a little bit more so and then there's like the hypes so you have like uh kangot is really the only uh, like hype i guess i would cons i would say that i'm in um it seems like the hypes have kind of died off there's others that are uh that are kind of out there that i'm and is still researching and i put those um, in the ones that I'm researching, there's, there like, there's this final mente that I'm going to be taking a look at, um, you know, that a uh, few guys have gotten into, it looks promising. There's, there's a few projects. Um, I feel like the hypes, like if it's, if it's like an unsustainable interest rate, daily interest rate, like I feel like a lot of those have kind of died off. I'm not seeing as much of those in, in crypto anymore. I'm seeing more of like, um, I'm seeing more, more, um, like I guess smaller, uh, smaller projects that uh, seem seem sustainable. So there's uh, like some of the other ones like Mine Capital, Arbistar, uh, Finico has a very high minimum investment, uh, Passive Expert. Um, there's uh, Torquebot was another one. Uh, so some of these, um, you know, I, I'm interested in, in you know. Um, uh, diving into these a little bit more and I just haven't haven't yet because I don't have the funds to be able to invest in some of these but I'm uh, They're on my radar and I'm interested in them and uh, I'm trying to get a little bit more diversified so once I have the uh, you know the funds to be able to um, You know to, to put a hundred dollars here a hundred dollars there 
uh, that sort of thing. Yeah, uh, Dewan, I talked about Hex um, um, for, for quite a few minutes earlier, so I don't want to cover that too much again. But it's, you know, um, I'll have to do I'll have to do a video specific on Hex because it seems to be one that a lot of people in the passive income space it's on their radar. What's up with Cretonium Bank? Yeah, I. Um, you know, that was a guy that, that reached out to me, looked looked promising in the beginning. Um, I don't have that on the list anymore because the guy is just unresponsive. So I, I don't I don't understand, um, you know, exactly what he was doing. Um, you know, I did a video for him and, uh, you know, I, I, I've made like thirty dollars in that project and he just he just stopped, you know, paying out. He just and so I didn't I didn't understand what his mindset was he just he does not seem very very um organized he says once like the the coronavirus i guess like screwed everything up um but uh, uh i don't know if i buy that I, I don't i think he what he was trying to do is like to set up a hype or something that he was hoping would kind of take off and get some legs and um it just it just didn't because he like it's not paying out so you, uh, you know that that one is is um you know, I mean, uh, it seemed it seemed uh, interesting or promising in the beginning, but you know, the guy just completely abandoned the project. So, I mean, what what can you do? But um, yeah, it it uh, you know, I I've been it, it gets frustrating with some of these projects. There's been there's been so many um, so many uh, inauthentic projects you know like the the stuff coming out with dropple was really frustrating because like i had been supporting those guys i've been investing with those guys for two years and um and it's and everything that's that was coming out about that project and everything it just like the uh like i really thought that they had some tech or some things that they were working on and it and it turns out that a lot of that stuff was just copy paste so like their jade bot is just a a, a copy paste of um three commas uh, and their decks apparently is fake. They've been selling uh, millions and millions of dollars uh, of, of Dropple. Um, they, they've just defrauded all of their investors. So, I mean, it seemed to me like that was, that was a legit project, like, you know, back in the day. It seemed, seemed like they were really doing things the right way. Um, they are in California. So they, you know, they need to kind of abide by some of the rules and everything. But, um, you know, that's why, like, I, I feel like with some of these, it's, it's best to, um, you know, to, to invest just very minimal amounts, want, you know, uh, amounts that it's not going to hurt if, if you lose and just hope that you're getting into long term platforms. Like with a lot of these, I feel like they have long term potential. All the ones that I'm in now, I feel like have very long term potential. I feel like. Um, a lot of these could be around for uh, the foreseeable future. Um, you know, there's there they seem you know with the exception of like like the hypes, unless they kind of perhaps change some of it. Like I, I'm still a little bit skeptical with like say a platform like Kanga, and that's why I have that on like my secondary channel because um, I you know some of that stuff like I'm not not as sure with. I mean, mining up is kind of hypey. You know, I I don't know how sustainable like their model is i, I want to see uh, a little bit more from that because like i had some questions i am not really getting answers from but um it is it does seem like it has some legs and it, and it does seem that if you put in a little bit right now that um you do have a really good chance to, to roi um in in a, a decent amount of time and that's why that one is actually appealing to, you know their telegram is just is just massive it's just been blowing up like crazy um, Evo AI, uh, they, they look like they're coming back. They're going to do some sort of botting platform. Um, they're kind of changing their model. So, um, you know, I, I, I'm still kind of, uh, keeping, keeping an eye on that one. The, that one was kind of frustrating, but they didn't seem as scammy as some of the other ones, but they kind of had like a ICO that just didn't really go anywhere. And they weren't really selling tokens because people weren't able to, um, uh, realize profits. So that one is, is um, um, you know, I, we'll have to see how that goes. Cynthia bot with a face that should be launching soon. Um, I know that they're, they're, they've been working on that for quite some time. Uh, from what I hear though, it's gonna be very expensive. 
uh, to get into that. So I think what they're trying to do is uh, make sure that it is that it is profitable. And I don't know how profitable it is or it's going to be. I don't know what the potential is going to be, but I do know that I think that they want to charge um, a fair amount for that bot, more than some of the other ones that are on the on the market right now. So um, I don't know if it's going to be worth it for that one yet. Um, Scavenger bots, another one, um, you know, the, uh, with the botting platforms that I'm kind of looking into. That one looks, you know, I mean, as far as I know, it's been doing pretty pretty well. I think with some of these bot stuff, it's not or these bot botting um, algorithms and things like that, you, you do need to stay on top of them. So it's not entirely passive, but uh, um, they like, what I'm trying to do is basically simplify the process, um, you know, experiment with them, find find the winners and uh, share that with my audience. And so I'm, I'm just slowly uh, just working in, in, in that direction, um, you know, for, for everyone. Um, on iOS T, the iPirates, uh, that was one that I that I was doing a lot of videos on earlier. Um, it's it's really uh, the volume is really um, dipped off. There hasn't been a whole lot of new innovation. A lot of the people in the Guppies and Pi iPirates, um, you know, uh, project have really kind of shifted gear and they've come over to PowerMine uh, because PowerMine seems like they're they've um, they're really picking up. Um, where iPirates kind of left off. So I had a lot of uh, high hopes for iPirates. You know, I was, uh, I was really getting into mining their loot token. Um, it had really good ROI. Like the ROI was like, you know, between 20 and 30 days. And now it's like, um, it's like um, 12, 1200 to like 2000 2, days. So the ROI on that is just ridiculous. And I think that has a lot to do with um, the volume kind of dropping off, the user engagement dropping off. Fish and chips, which is kind of attached to that, has uh, everyone's kind of been selling out of that, including the um, you know the the um, the main guys in, in guppies. So that was unfortunate to see because it kind of dumped on everyone. Um, but um, you know it does have long term potential. You know it's it's really low right now. I mean it's it's a smart contract so. Um, if you believe in iOS T and you think that uh, perhaps um, it, I, I think that uh, if if the iPirates and Guppies project if they go into MatchNet like they've been talking about and they start making some profits and they can revive that um, that ecosystem a little bit better make make the profits a little bit better I could see that coming back a little bit but right now like their bankroll is not very good if you're looking at Fry iFry which is kind of the foundation of that project. Um, it hasn't been paying very, very good. Like I, I lost big on that. Um, you know, I bought, I bought in on that and the, and the booty token. I basically bought the, the top of that. It's gone down like 10 X. So, um, those ones are really frustrating because that was right around the time that I really wanted to get into, um, in, into hex. I wanted to put some money into hex and cause I knew that was going to be the, the bottom, you know, and it, it ended up being, um, the bottom. So I, I lost, I lost out big by basically investing in, in the guppies project as a over over hex and I got um, you know and now I'm at a I'm at a situation where I don't really want to invest in hex because I feel like it's like you've kind of missed the boat and I feel like there might be better projects um, that are kind of because um, I like with hex it's already 100 X like I don't see it doing another 100 X I you know maybe it'll it'll go up slowly and that's kind of what I anticipate I think it's gonna go up you know slowly until December, but um, you know it may double, it may it may it may go five x, maybe ten x, but I don't see it doing another hundred x. Um, you know, I just like at that point, like the the market cap on that would be just absolutely insane. Uh, so I feel like they're they're you know I feel like it needs to have a little bit of a dip um, for 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 that to. Um, be seen as a, perhaps a little bit more sustainable and that might be a time to buy in but uh, um, that's kind of where I see those projects let me check on the chat a little bit wanted to get some drops like three times and it's lows yeah yeah I mean I uh, I, uh, you know, like with Dropple, like as it was going down, like I felt like it was still, uh, still a viable project. They had a lot of promising, 
rhetoric, you know, um, and it turns out that a lot of that stuff was just was 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 all bullshit, apparently. So um, so I got burned on that project pretty good, and and it's frustrating. I I just um, you know I, I I don't see them coming back from some of the SEC allegations. Allegations. They don't they don't just say some of that stuff just lightly. Like they I'm sure they have. Um, evidence to back up some of the statements they're 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 saying with some of those guys and and it's it's pretty crazy if you read that sec document like some of the allegations against those guys it's it's sickening really because it's just it's uh, you know i'm i'm i think i'm just getting to the point where it's just like i want a lot of that stuff like just off my channel um i if if it's a higher risk stuff where you know it has the you know it, it, it may potentially um have a, issues or problems in the future, I'll put that on maybe my secondary channel or something, but I really just want to focus on on building uh, long-term projects in, um, on, on my channel. So that's kind of been, you know, my, my focus lately. And, and a lot of the projects are smaller. There's not, there, you know, like with the, there was a lot of large passive income projects over the last two or three years. And those, a lot of the, the big ones, they ended up failing. Um, and I feel like there's a lot of smaller projects that are uh, that that look look promising. Like there's this one um, ladder leaders, uh, it's a big data's project. So he, you know, he was a guy that was in arbitraging, and um, um, I do like the 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 look of that project. It's very small, very small. But the the UI the with the website that he's running, and, and they're basically doing trading, very conservative. Um, you know, low risk trading, and um, you know they've they've been able to st uh, steadily grow um, the assets. You know, with that. So how that scales, I don't know. But as far as like being a small project, it's it's looking good. So that one I have my eye on. Um, Versus was another one. That's like one that Matty uh, Crypto um, and uh, several other people in arbitraging have kind of uh, latched onto. Um, I don't know enough about that. I need to find out more about that project, but. Um, that one is on Tron and it's a DAP that, you know, might have some, some legs to it. We'll have to see, um, a few others, um, bad bit is moving to a new blockchain. Uh, I think that they need to do like a integration process. So that one, I'm going to probably do a video on that. Um, maybe the next, next week or two, you know, once they, once they get things a little bit more settled. So I've been talking with those guys. So, but that's. That's most of the projects that I'm I'm kind of um, actively looking at. There's 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 other ones that I, I might be researching, but uh, you know I put those in the list below. If you guys have projects, um, you know that you want me to take a look at, and if you can give me some information on it, you know, reach out to me on Telegram. Uh, you know, drop me a comment in the comment section below. Um, you know, there's. Um, um, you know, crypto has really been evolving over the last several years, and I feel like there's, you know, there's some there's some good um, some good opportunities. You, know, you look at a project like Library. I don't have the I didn't have the best first impression of Library, but I don't want to hold it too much against those guys. But that looks like a, a promising project. Um, Icon uh, staking looks interesting. BlockFi. I mean, you know, some of these like you're only looking to like eight or ten percent. Um, annual interest rate so it, you know they're they're long-term projects but um, you know they um, you know you get a little bit diversified in some of these I mean it's better than a bank so they they, they seem to be uh, good in that sense and you're also holding your value in uh, in crypto so like say you you want to lock up your your Bitcoin for a little bit and uh, you want to earn a little bit on that in something that's that's pretty solid like BlockFi might be one of the most legit solid projects out there it just doesn't pay very much but um, uh, it seems it seems really really secure um, there's a lot of projects that the PowerMine investment group I feel like that might be a next next thing that we start to see is investment groups private investment groups coming out and doing um, you know, groups like uh, like what PowerMine, like when they started, they were just essentially a hedge fund that was pooling assets to mine different dividend paying dApps. And it really just started evolving from there. 
and uh, it's been really it's been really interesting to see that project grow and that one like i've i've said that one is my uh, my highest paying um, platform that i'm in um, much much higher than a lot of the other ones um, it's the one i'm most invested in but it's it's got uh, a lot of a lot of future potential and i think that uh, that one is one that um, um, you know, I, I could see myself getting a lot more involved with, uh, with, with, with that project. So there's a, there's a lot to like about, about what they're doing. More DAPS projects with paid services would be cool, where you can earn with your knowledge or activities, not only by staking. There's um, some of the marketing, market predicting projects though. Yeah, there was a, there was actually, I want to look into this one. It's like 3X, it's like a coin. It's like, like 3X Bitcoin, 3X Ethereum, th you know, and, and, it, and 3X long, 3X short Bitcoin, 3X long. And you can buy the coin and it's basically like a leveraged coin um, that like, so if, if you feel that uh, uh, this is kind of the bottom of, of, of the market or whatever with any particular coin, you can buy like the long coin, which is like a three X long coin. I think that was that's kind of an interesting project. I need to do more research on something like that. Um, as far as like um, skills and, and services and, and things like putting some of those to good use, I, I feel like that might be something you could see more integrated into some of these uh, collaboration projects, like what what PowerMind's doing. Uh, I feel like uh, you know I mentioned that in one of my videos. It's like if you have some skills in a particular area and you want to help out with this particular project, like that might be one way to do it. So you, um, um, if, 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 you, if you have some, some skills that you can offer or, or uh, be involved like it, like we have a guy that's really good at doing logos and you know, um, you, know you have uh, YouTubers that, are, that have a little bit of a following, they're helping with marketing. You have um, guys that are good at doing research on some of these, these projects, like some of the guys that some of the actual miners like Safe, um, Safe has is, is, is really impressed me with his overall knowledge of everything going on with crypto. Because one of the great things that like if you get in that group and you have to check out one of the other videos where uh, it'll have the link to the Telegram group, but um, it's, it's really, really good to get in those groups because you can learn so much from those guys um, and what their opinions are on different projects, like why they didn't get into Hex or why they aren't getting into this project or some of these other ones. Like the projects I'm in, there's a lot of projects I'm in that the PowerMind group isn't, isn't um, investing in. And, uh, and they, they explain some of the reasoning and it's like, you know, um, you know I, I, I see where they're coming from. So I feel like they are really doing a great job of protecting the bankroll. And that's the most important aspect to that project is making that bankroll grow. As that grows, it's gonna be paying out more and more dividends every day. And as they're innovating and they're adding other projects on top of it, that's also gonna be um, you know, uh, helping to fuel that project. So I am, um, you know, I'm really glad to see that uh, progressing the way it is because with a lot of the passive income projects in the past like they they had some trading bots they were doing arbitraging or something like that and then it turns out that they weren't or they weren't profitable or they were lying or they just exited you know with everyone's funds um, then you know you have the uh, decentralized finance space a lot of that stuff is zero sum so you get in early yeah you can profit but you know you have to go into those with a long-term mindset um, some of them are um, positive edge or non-zero sum so where where there's there's uh they're generating more income than um you know than they're taking in uh by whatever means they're able to do that and uh, it's really interesting to see the projects that they're in where where they are doing that so like say for instance um like bust a bit is a, is a good example it's a project that um you know it's a gambling project so you don't have to necessarily be a gambler but there's a one percent house edge or one one and a half percent house edge so by purchasing in the bankroll um you can see that slowly grow over time so it's a positive edge investment by getting into that uh as long as you believe in that in the fundamentals of that project it's been around like seven years so it's been around a long long time and it's a very simplistic um project and um you know the uh 
the Power of My Investment Group has has like already you know gotten their their initial like capital back in that project, and now it's earning dividends for for the community. Where am I living? I'm in Manila. I'm in the Philippines. Let me see if I can. Uh, this is my uh, little balcony. It's raining a little bit out here, but um, it's a nice little area. It's nice that it's raining because it's been hot. It's been super hot, but uh, the hottest months, the hottest months of the year here are um, like April, April and like late March, April and early May. And then as the rain, like the rainy season, like just started. So it's going to start cooling down because it's been really hot. It's been like super hot, like trying to sleep. It's, it's, it's pretty bad because we don't have an air conditioner hooked up. Like we have high ceilings. Um, you know, when in our apartment, which really helps because uh, I didn't have that in my last apartment and we can get a little bit of a breeze going cause we're, you know, we're in a high rise. So we open everything up and we get a little bit of a, a breeze going through there, but it's, it's, um, uh, it's good that it's been, um, cooling off a little bit. So now we're just entering the rainy season. Uh, so, but, uh, still have like the, the, all the stuff going on with the, uh, the lockdown. And, um, you know, I, I'm hoping that's going to be lifted pretty soon. Like it was supposed to be lifted, I guess today, today's May 15th. So you, you see a lot of businesses starting to open back up. So things are getting more lax here. Um, I know like other parts of the Philippines have already opened up. Like Palawan is, um, a very touristy area and very beautiful. I still haven't been out there. I want to, I want to really check it out, but, um, uh, they've, they've opened up. So. Uh, I think the only place that's really still kind of, um, you know, very much um, still kind of having some of the lockdown issues is here here in the city. But um, well, that's about it for me. I don't want to keep this this too long. I just wanted to really kind of cover like all of the projects that I'm in, and I want to do this, you know, maybe like once a month or something. I'll do like a live stream and just kind of cover some of the things because I don't get a chance to really talk about everything that I'm in all of the time and just give a little bit of an update on some of those. Um, and, um, you know, like I, I'm, I'm like I said, I'm kind of working on, um, a few different angles. I'm, I'm working to get a little bit more into mining, I'm working to get a little bit more into some of the trading bots. Um, I'm, I'm working with like the power mine investment group to really uh, grow that. Cause I think there's a lot of potential with everything that they're doing there. Uh, you know, there's some interesting investment opportunities with some of these projects. I just haven't, you know, have the funds to be able to invest yet, but they're on my radar. And, you know, I'm interested to kind of follow some of those. I hope that they are uh, long term. And, uh, you know, if they if they're continuing to look good, you know, it might be something that I'm going to be, um, you know, investing a little bit in um, slowly, uh, you know, over time. But uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's about it for me. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next video.